My name is uh, Michał Bienkowski. Uh, I'm a software developer. Uh, I specialize mo mo mainly in functional testing. And in this uh, presentation, I, presentation, I will show you a couple tips and tricks, which I hope will improve your test and experience. Um, so let's start with the question, what is developer experience or DX in short? So um, I, I would say that uh, DX is just the less known UX cousin, which is a user experience. And uh, um, in general, this experience uh, you have, um, it, it describes the experience you have when you uh, work on the software, you, you program uh, some feature. <clears throat> and uh, this, this is related um, more or less with the emotion and the state of, of your gut. So to say, um, uh, when you when you work on, on the software. Um, so what makes this uh, DX good? In short, if you write a code and you feel happy about it, you feel uh, you know relaxed with uh, with what you have. It means that you have good experience. It means that you have good DX and. Uh, and the question uh, is, what is the most important uh, factor which influences this uh, good experience uh, when working uh, on a software? For me personally, uh, so that's my opinion, the most, uh, or, or at least one of the most important factor is IDE. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, so so, so we, we, I put this question, question here uh, in this, is good DX mean good IDE? So I would say in in many cases, yes, uh, it's very important um, aspect. So, uh, but it's not it's not all right. So uh, that's why there's a question mark. It's it's not that it's equal that uh, you can uh, if you have a good IDE, then you probably might have good DX for sure. If you have bad IDE. Uh, then your your experience is is bad. You can feel real pain working with uh, uh, with uh, IDE, which is designed poorly, like what, like this thing uh, with uh, what Nancy mentioned that uh, in first version of Lab you needed to disconnect wire, then you could move uh, nodes on the diagram. So that that's uh, you, DX which will uh, make you feel pain when you use it so those kinds of things right but besides ide there are more things like language itself uh, your community your work environment your uh, your cu your customer requirements a lot of things right but so so that's why we have multiple things which influence our our experience and uh, so it's not like only ID, but still uh, we can uh, do a lot with IDE to, to make it uh, make it best and, and, and it provides us uh, best uh, experience. So what makes IDE good? Um, <clears throat> so uh, when we when we program, we usually repeat ourselves so, there are there are always some kind of, some some pieces of code that we uh, <laughs> build from scratch and 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 repeat ourselves actually modifying just slight piece of it and uh, you know reinventing the wheel is something we should avoid and uh, good ideas should somehow encourage you to to reuse what you already have to not reinvent the wheel <clears throat> like uh, like with uh, some kind of toolbox and stuff like that. Uh, it should promote automation. So all, all those tedious, boring tasks, all those things that could be in theory automated uh, should be automated. And ID should allow you to uh, automate it somehow. So each time you see that you re repeat yourself, reinvent the wheel, you, you, you see that you already done that, you should uh, 
you know, you should uh, try to um, extract this part of your work and automate it. Build a script, you know, use VI scripting if we talk about LabVIEW and try to automate it. Next, uh, yeah, toolboxes. So if we have a, this code that we can reuse uh, or scripts that we want to run, it's nice to have those things at hand in some kind of toolbox or palette. We can, we can uh, access pretty easily and quickly. And it's best if IDE can integrate those kind of toolboxes uh, for you. So it's always uh, uh, near, uh, nearby and you can use it uh, at any time. Uh, next, uh, context aware information. If it, it's, 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 you know, uh, you always need to search for some additional information. Probably don't remember each library. Uh, you know, you need to search how to use particular method. Was the prototype? Uh, was the, you know, all those those kind of things. And it's it's nice if you have some kind of <clears throat> quickly accessible uh, help uh, with this information. And also if um, something like IntelliSense. So when you type, uh, uh, you have an object, you uh, type, uh, you know, or you open uh, parentheses and you, you already have some kind of tip how to, uh, what kind of uh, parameters you can use or what kind of methods you can use on the object and stuff like that. This is also nice if you have uh, those kind of things in, uh, in your IDE. <clears throat> and it's also nice to have some kind of uh, personalization, and if you can, um, or preferences, maybe that's a better word. So, you know, one person prefers dark mode, another light mode, one prefers bigger font, another smaller font. One guy prefers this window here, another somewhere else. So it's nice if you can customize this uh, as you like. Uh, so, so, uh, so it it uh, it suits, suits you as uh, you know it's it's like like you like you like uh, like you need it. And uh, the most important part uh, to me would be uh, having some kind of feature like this quick drop in LabVIEW. Uh, so other IDs also provide some some quick comments shortcuts like this, so you can run your scripts. Uh, run something with uh, with uh, keyboard shortcut and stuff, something like this, right? So this is a very, very nice feature of LabVIEW. And uh, other ideas as well, maybe, you know, it's, not, oh, it's, uh, it's a nice thing to call it quick drop, but other ideas provide a similar um, feature, but call it differently. And, uh, QuickDrop was introduced in 2009, if I remember correctly. To me, it was, uh, I, I, I could say that I'm a native Quick Dropper because I started using LabVIEW after it was already uh, officially introduced. <clears throat> and uh, I have to say that once you start using it, there's, there's no turning back. And the sounds of the pressed spacebar space are endless. You cannot you cannot uh, uh, go back, right? So so uh, you already have this um, muscle memory, and you you start uh, automating everything you, you can with it. And one one time I, I had this uh, unfortunate un unfortunate uh, case where I needed to use the lab view from the dark ages before quick drop, so to say. <clears throat> and yeah, I. I it really hurts uh, to use uh, those old uh, LabVIEW IDs uh, without all those uh, improvements for, for uh, productivity. And uh, QuickDrop, in my opinion, is like ultimate pro productivity tool uh, because it's always at hand, because it exposes a lot of things you can use via, through VI servers. So you have uh, properties, uh, functions, <coughs> And you have all the context of the uh, operation because you have uh, uh, you, can, you have information about selected objects and, and, and stuff like that. So you can do a lot with it. Um, and it's, it's the extent you just copy paste template uh, some VI scripting and and it's, it's voila it's it's ready right. It's simple, practical, and 
allows uh, many customization, which are precisely what I need, right? So I don't need, if, if something is not 100% suitable for what I need, I can customize it and change whatever I like. So, so uh, this is nice too because it it gives you exactly what you need. It has very nice community, which is very important factor if you want to um, build that kind of um, tools. It requires uh, a significant amount of time to do so. So, if you have a nice community and everyone is participating, then you can uh, quickly create a big uh, set of nice. Uh, productivity tools you can use. So I don't know uh, if, if it's everything that we can, probably it's not uh, everything we can uh, say about um, developer experience and a good IDE. So if there's something else I didn't mention, um, and I could forget about something because the beginning of presentation is always more stressful and I probably forgot about something. But anyway, if there's something else, uh, please uh, type into the chat. I'm just curious if you have something special uh, which makes your experience um, better when you, when, you, when you code and especially if we, if we uh, talk about IDE. Uh, now let's uh, have a look how we can, how we can uh, improve this experience in test end. Uh, so what uh, features we can use in test end to make it uh, more uh, suitable. And I will start with uh, test and environment. So <clears throat> you probably know that after you install test end, uh, the, all the configuration file and all the, all, all the test and file uh, in short are spread across different uh, uh, directories. So like this one, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, you know, main catalog where you have sequence editor, for instance. You have uh, public where you have uh, like um, components, like, I don't know, it's, I think reporting is uh, stored there. Uh, <clears throat> and process models. Uh, you have application data, which is main configuration directory where you have your, uh, for instance, um, station globals, uh, station configuration, templates, stuff like that. And local application data, which is less known, but here we, uh, here we store, here test and stores uh, layout uh, and U UI configuration. So this is, um, so those are the test and directories, uh, uh, which, uh, which stores the, the, the information about your test system. And historically speaking, uh, those uh, directories were global for the, for the machine we have. So there was a problem. If we had side, if you wanted to have side by side uh, test and uh, system configuration. So let's say we are maintaining multiple test systems we have one machine and uh, we want to have, we want to maintain or develop multiple projects, multiple testers, for instance, right? So there was a problem and um, there were, there were a couple options before 2016, of course, how you could maintain it. For sure, you could do it manually. So manually manage those files. You could uh, create a script to do it for you. Or you could create or have separate virtual machine per test and uh, system, which is not that bad. Uh, in general, that might be a good idea to have a separate VM per project if you can't afford that. But in 2016, uh, this concept of environments was introduced. And this is great improvement of, uh, of this experience of test in my opinion it, it really improves uh, how we can uh, work with this uh, so it enables multiple side by side configuration on a single system and it gives us better control over those um, uh, folders and so now we had this uh, now we had this uh, public 
where we could store our plugins, custom process models, front end callbacks, maybe uh, test uh, custom step types, common app data where we have our separate instance of configuration, file instances of configuration, like station globals, for instance. So now we can have, you know, separate data structures uh, in station globals if you if you use them per, per project, right? And local uh, application data, which is, uh, is usually it's not uh, not that important, and um, usually I don't keep them in a, in a repository. Uh, don't keep it in a repository, but uh, I will mention in a moment why why it's uh, why it might be useful to still uh, add this to the repository. There are some limitation. Uh, the main limitation, in my opinion, is this user management. Uh, because uh, you can have only, well, testant will, even if you have user any file in your uh, common app data, it will still uh, use the uh, global file. And uh, yeah, and that's, that's, that's a problematic. There, there are workarounds, but this presentation isn't uh, covering this. And other limitations uh, are less common. I, at least I haven't encountered problems uh, because of them yet. And I heard that, and I uh, plans to include Active Directory in some future version of testing. I don't know if that's true, but that's what I heard. Uh, so how to create it? Simply in Sequence Editor, Configure Environment, we have this window. We create a test environment file, configure uh, directories, uh, which needs to be included. We can specify a relative uh, path res relative to the test and environment file. And that's it. It's, it is, this creates our file. We need to restart sequence editor. And this restarting is <coughs> uh, not, uh, well, not the best part of it, but I will show you in a moment how to, how to deal with it. This file is very simple. This is the content of example file. Nothing uh, special uh, in here. Uh, usually, you will use this configuration window once, uh, probably, and then copy and pasting this file and um, modify, modify it in a test text editor. That's what I do at least. And to be honest, this file is almost always the same. A um, couple, uh, couple side notes. If you want to get uh, environment path in, in expression, because for instance, you have some relative uh, path in your sequence and you want to have some uh, some um, reasonable uh, root path for the relative path, you can use this method to, to get the environment path and use your en environment path as a, as a root path. Uh, if you build your uh, sequence editor from scratch, and by scratch, I mean like completely from scratch, you, you create a test and engine object and all, all, the, all the hardcore stuff you build uh, by yourself, then you need to use this class and this method to initialize um environment if you like this is an, here you can find example i will share this presentation uh, in a moment so you can have a look uh, what's there you can completely disable it uh, using windows registry um, and also side note you don't need to copy all the files from from main testing catalog for instance if you want to have uh, tools there here's a method to export it and install in a new uh, in new uh, environment. And of course, a global environment is still there at your disposal. You can still reference uh, process model, plugins, and all the, fe all the features, all the, all the components that are available there in, uh, in your environment. Because uh, you know, this, uh, as long as you have search directories configured by default. Uh, and another side note, uh, yes, uh, in my opinion, it's it's very nice uh, option to include uh, uh, environment uh, your environment in uh, version control uh, because this way you can uh, <clears throat> make sure that your uh, test system and configuration is always the same. Uh, so um, what's more, if you add it and you use, for instance, this tortoise tool set for git or svn you can and you and you have all three uh, directories under source co control you can kind of learn what's going on under the hood in test and because 
uh, tortoise will indicate with this red exclamation mark whenever something changed in your environment and it can change uh, in many ways. Uh, so if each time you change the station uh, uh, configuration, change templates, change your layout, maybe different things can happen and you will see that this particular fi file change and you can kind of learn how it works. So this is also some benefit. And that's why I mentioned that sometimes I add even local app data into source code control. And two approaches for managing uh, this, uh, I usually keep my, my environment in my project uh, repository. So if I have one tester for one customer and second tester for another customer, let's say each project will contain this uh, this um, this environment file however if you create something more like an, a framework for your test system you can keep your environment in a separate repository and then use externals in svn for instance to include it in your uh, in your in your project or even not because uh, that, well that depends how how we how we configure it but okay this is something which I'm not covering in, in this presentation. But yeah, I use those two approaches uh, in, 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 in simple words. Uh, selecting an environment. <clears throat> so uh, to start a sequence editor or to start test an engine, to be more precise, in an environment, uh, we, we need to specify it somehow. So we can use this menu, uh, this configuration menu I showed before. Um, we can set this environment, like fix, fix, fix it in a, in a Windows registry. But as a rule of thumb, I would um, say don't mess up with a Windows registry. Uh, probably there are use cases for that. But uh, in my opinion, it's just like changing global environment path. So you lose, you lose all the flexibility here. Uh, this is an example how to do it. Uh, and the best option, in my opinion, is to use uh, CLI um, and, and, and switch. Um, so side note uh, as well, um, so test and application supports uh, CLI, so you can, uh, you can use this and switch in, in sequence editor, sequence analyzer, user interfaces, and so on. So this is something we can use to, uh, to start uh, sequence editor in particular environment. <clears throat> uh, yes. So this is uh, what Sequence Editor provides. This is uh, Sequence Editor CLI we can use. Um, also side note, there is no quiet uh, switch, unfortunately. So we cannot uh, like uh, run some <clears throat> setup um, sequence silently. Uh, you, can it, you can include uh it uh, in your startup um, uh, sequence but it will open sequence editor gui anyway and uh, also i don't know if you noticed but in 2021 those four features in cli appeared but then i don't want to tell us what what is it. it's for internal use it's a secret and they can keep their secrets basically um yes this how usually looks my startup script uh, so so i use a um, uh, script location to rel re relatively specify environment uh, directory and additionally i also set initial uh, working directory this way and setting this will also make sure that uh, initial working directory in your search directories will be the directory where the script is located. So this might be also useful uh, sometimes. Uh, so you run the script and you can see in the bottom, uh, sequence editor bottom uh, status bar, uh, what's your environment. Uh, in summary for environment, I would say that um, it's perfect foundation for uh, the, the DX improvement because uh, thanks to this, you can actually control your customization. So you can control your custom experience uh, in it. Uh, so you can add your custom tools, add uh, some improvements, and you have control over it because you store it in your um, in the cut in the directory you specify, and 
you can uh, have it in uh, source control. Um, yes, now let's uh, have a look at another uh, subject, which is layout um, and UI configuration. So uh, when you first, first uh, start sequence editor, you might feel, well, overwhelmed, especially if it's first time you start it and you come from a blank lab view diagram, which is empty, and you see this many panes and windows options and you don't know, don't know where to start. And it might be also confusing if you open it after someone who desperately tries to debug it or, or, or play with uh, UI and you, you see something like on the screen. So this might be, uh, might be confusing. I know that, and I already invested some time in uh, fixing this, uh, this issue of first uh, of test and first contact and they actually removed uh, as a couple of things so this uh, here i have a slide of the old uh, layout or old gui and yes this this toolbar changed and then a couple other things changed uh, they also fixed this sidebar so you cannot remove it which is not necessarily good because here we have insertion palette and, and windows, which are not important. You don't need it actually if you use quick drop and this control tab uh, shortcut, which shows you all the open windows. Uh, but you know, that's the, the decision, decision. I don't think we can close them or hide them. But anyway, we have some options, some out of the box um, options in sequence editor to, to make it more uh, more simple, less overwhelming, and let, this is an example we can use for for operator interface uh, where we hide every unnecessary uh, feature and display only what is uh, what's important. And I will show you um, first of all what options we have in in, the conf in configuration of sequence editor, and uh, after that I will show you a a tool which loads. Uh, particular layout assigned to particular user. Yeah, I think this is better, especially for operator and especially for someone who, you know, saves time for building operator UI from scratch. So, so that's also a kind of good developer experience as well. Um, yeah, so what we have here, uh, view customized toolbar and menus. We can create custom toolbars. We can alter uh, menus. We can change uh, 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 icon size. There are more options, but I listed those more uh, interesting to me. Um, what's important now since uh, not only that, uh, and I hide a couple uh, toolbars in this new uh, GUI, but I also realized that there are some things that I never actually saw in, in, uh, in menu, which is this edit path. So we can actually create toolbars with some hidden items and, uh, and uh, use them if we, if we, if we like, if we, if we need them. And what's sad here is that we cannot create toolbars with our, with our tools, with custom tools. And uh, we cannot also use custom icons. It's also a sad thing. Uh, and about keyboards, we can assign custom keyboard shortcuts. It's not rocket science, but it's not also very popular. In theory, we could achieve some mouseless uh, navigation uh, here, if we, especially if we use this view uh, shortcuts. This view window is not necessary since, like I mentioned, we can use Control Tab to to achieve uh, even more. And there are some useless uh, items as well because if you configure your shortcut, you have all the available menus there, and some of those items are just sub menu, so there is no assigned action. So, like surround selected width is just uh, you know it it shows you more options, and you can still assign a shortcut for it, but there is no point of it and and I, uh, I mean, uh, sequence editor do not filter this, uh, those items, but you can play around it and maybe you can find something like, uh, like this edit paths I found. So this is a uh, additional uh, tool you can use to edit uh, all the paths you have in, uh, in sequence editor. 
uh, yeah, and, and in theory, you can you can have this mouseless uh, editing, especially if you pair it with uh, quick drop and properly prepared templates. I think uh, for now it's more for cowboys. I would say uh, the, the solution is not complete, in my opinion. The, the, and I should have a look at it and make it more uh, seamless. Yeah, another option. I don't know if uh, if you saw that, but uh, you can. Uh, alter also a slightly expression um, editing uh, uh, pane. So mo the most important is this uh, uh, hot keys, I would say. So you can assign auto completion. This is already thankfully uh, by default uh, assigned, but there is something like uh, show me a tip uh, tips, uh, but you need to assign uh, hotkeys because it's already assigned to find window. So it's, you know, it's, it's something you need to uh, take care, uh, check errors and stuff like that. Not many, but there, there are a couple of them and font. So actually maybe I will, wait, maybe I will show that in uh, in actual environment. So let's, uh, let's have a start uh, uh, test stand. And uh, let's have a look. So uh, yeah, so we have a possibility also to change font. Uh, for, to me, fonts in testing in sequence editor are too small, and at some point uh, I start uh, hurt. So it would be better to to have more options than three fixed uh, font size. Uh, yeah. So let's have a look what I mean by that. So uh, if I do this, uh, I can I can assign couple. Uh, hotkeys here, but function tip, this is come for left, it's already assigned. So this would need to be reassigned, check for errors. Um, it's pretty useful. This is to me not very useful. And this font size, you have three options. That's that's uh, pretty lame to me because, uh, you know, we can still uh, con control scroll and it will get bigger and bigger, but we cannot save uh, this font. And it will be even more useful to have uh, option to customize bigger fonts in general. And I don't think there is such option. Moving on, uh, this is the most useful thing, in my opinion, in, in UI configuration, which is uh, configuring uh, configuring this uh, uh, step list configuration. So this part of, uh, of the sequence editor. Uh, we can configure, first of all, there are predefined setups like bigger uh, bigger uh, icons, fonts, and so on. But we can also uh, create uh, completely custom uh, stuff. Keep in mind that there are separate configuration per execution and per uh, editing. And let's say if I edit this one, I have more options like more lines of comments, like uh, icon size, some appearance um, related things, other like this, colors. Uh, yeah, things like that. And like here is the fine. So at some point uh, in test and you, you probably saw that skipped uh, steps are uh, grayed out. So this is configured in here. And this is even more interesting because here we can create custom uh, columns. And if we create a new column, we have predefined um, uh, types of these columns, but the most important is this expression where we can keep a totally custom expression. And here I have an example. So uh, this monster expression here is to uh, display summary of attributes assigned to the step. So normally uh, in test and if you assign attributes to, to step, and I don't know if it's pop uh, popular, but I use it uh, quite often, uh, you don't see what's What's the content? We don't. You don't know what kind of attributes you have. You don't know the values. You, you only see that you have some custom attributes in summary. But if you use this monster, you can see uh, x x. You can see something like this. This would be the summary. You can of course use only this attributes get XML, but it will be messy XML. And uh, in my opinion, it's better to have messy expression here than mess in this uh, summary here. And also uh, a useful uh, expression I can share with you is this uh, uh, like uh, indication of result uh, reporting. So um, normally in, in, in test and you can 
specify it in multiple places. Some it's popular to disable it here, but you don't see it anyway uh, in in here. So uh, so using this uh, this expression, you will have a column which looks like this, and it calculates the logic to display if, if it's actually enabled or not. So this is uh, something also uh, I found useful uh, to 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 display. And uh, one oh, sorry, one more thing is uh, the sequence editor option, which is available from from here. So we have this uh, this window uh, also where we can configure some uh, sequence editor uh, options. Uh, they are stored as secedit.xml in local app data. And you know, like you can disable user manager, for instance, for operators. Uh, most recently used files, other options, plenty options. Well, plenty, that's a big word. You have some options available here you can use. And you can also lock uh, your, your uh, UI so uh, you can, can uh, make sure that uh, nobody mess with, uh, with your, your layout. And what is even more important, you can save this configuration into layout bin file and mark it to load at startup. And this feature I use in my uh, tool to uh, reload uh, layout when I use, uh, when I log in as a particular uh, user, which I'm going to show you. Uh, one side note, so yeah, uh, when we close the sequence editor, it stores this layout current bin file in uh, local app data. So this, this is the latest state of layout of your sequence editor. And also save this uh, secedit XML of, uh, with, with the current configuration of your UI. And this file can be accessed through application manager and you can tweak it and reload it, but uh, it will not, as far as I know, uh, reload this layout. So in, in sequence editor, you have this button which, uh, which you can use to re re reload layout, but I don't I don't know is there if there is actual method to to do this uh, programmatically. However, we can do something uh, with it, and if we start uh, if we start this, uh, yeah. Now I try to log in as operator, and, and now it asks me to if I want to load the UI setup assigned to the operator. And if I click yes, it will restart the uh, sequence just like with the environment. And now I should see a layout assigned to, uh, to operator. And now I can see that, okay, this layout uh, is definitely different. This is the, the, the simple layout. Uh, yeah, let's say I open this one, right? Just for example, right? So. Um, this is simple layout, uh, and actually, this also displays the the mechanism I use to uh, to to, run, to make it work. Uh, so you know, I check uh, user uh, I check user uh, attributes, and uh, in user attributes, uh, there are uh, there is a path for this uh, for this layout, and uh, I replace it in uh, local app data. So testnet can use it when when it when it starts. Uh, so I replace those files actually uh, auto, uh, using this script. And uh, also, my, I think you might find it useful. So I have a look at uh, at uh, this restart script I have. Uh, so this is uh, the, the, the script I use. So I copy necessary files. And you might also find useful uh, to use this thing. So how to close current sequence editor uh, in the easiest way, I think that's so you can use this, uh, this, uh, this executable and use this flag. So I, I think that's the, the easiest way. So I close it and start again with the different files. That's that's how it how it works. And uh, yes, so this is about the layout and examples of possible layouts I I, I, I use. So this is for uh, for developers. Uh, so I have everything uh, at my at hand. 
uh, for during execution. And this is for operators, so you can simplify it. And if you want to have something very fancy to display for the user, you can always use this report uh, viewer. It displays HTML. Uh, this default plugin also has this option to display only the latest result, so you can use it. But since it's HTML and you can use on-the-fly reporting, you can display here a lot of different information. So you don't need to have the steps uh, pain at all, if, to, to be honest. Another uh, example with uh, with uh, simple uh, layout for for multiple uh, sockets for for operator. So those could be loaded uh, from uh, from using this tool. So maybe I will actually copy this one. So you can you can uh, if you open this uh, uh, this uh, link I copied into the chat. You can uh, follow the presentation and and. Uh, find uh, links to repository, like this one, for instance. Uh, so in this repository, you will find the tool I showed you for reloading uh, layout. So summary, uh, so perhaps a sequence editor does not offer many possibilities, but what we have uh, is, uh, is uh, I would say, uh, good enough. <laughs> For the most for most cases, give me a moment. Okay. Anyway, so so it is uh, usually enough. Uh, if it's not enough, you should ask yourself: Is it the proper tool to use? Maybe something else would be better. Uh, for developer, I guess it's uh, it's enough. For operator, you you can you can use it. You don't need to uh, build your own uh, UI. I think you can use sequence editor and slightly change the layout, and, and that would be suitable for the most cases on the production at least. Um, you can experiment with uh, this on-the-fly reporting for better vis visualization, or just an idea. Uh, there's this use case to use uh, Instrument Studio in pair with Test Stand, so Instrument Studio also can embed uh, some custom .NET, I guess, windows. So you might uh, use it use it also for some more fancy uh, control. And I guess, and I should uh, have a closer look at this sequence editor customization uh, because it's just simpler uh, if you don't need to build another application for for uh, for displaying uh, tests and uh, and i think sequence editor is faster also okay uh next templates uh, so i will try to be fast templates are very useful in my opinion and i use them um, very often, um, more often than uh, custom step types. To be to be honest, you can use them as clipboards. If you have some kind some statement with very complex expression, you can just drag and drop them to templates and reuse in many places. Uh, what's more, they can be used as toolbox or palette. I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. Uh, so, so if we have some uh, some sequences, we we. We developed as, uh, as tools. We can keep them in palettes, and that will that will work for us. We can drag and drop them, change uh, parameters, and, and and that's all. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's the, it's faster because you can just drag and drop them. You can automatically create them, uh, and it's easier to maintain. I think so. So yeah, I think templates are very nice and useful. Yeah, I'm aware that there are different than step types and there are different benefits of using uh, custom step types. But uh, in my experience, I found uh, templates much faster in use. And I know in theory, it provides worse DX because uh, for instance, you cannot uh, customize edit, uh, edit uh, pane, but maybe it's not, uh, it's not that bad because if we consider sequence adapter, uh, and then let's consider this example here. I usually use uh, sequence adapter as a action with sequence adapter, right? Most of the case, mo most of the time, I use some kind of wrappers and use uh, uh, sequence ed uh, sequence adapter as a building blocks, and everything else is just flow control or or, or something like synchronization, maybe. 
And if we consider let's this this step call executable with four uh, tabs of configuration, many fields, it, it that's the case where a newbies might feel uh, overwhelmed and uh, confused. So I know that this covers a lot of features, actually every cor every corner case probably, but uh, in every everyday use. I found that kind of a wrapper with simplified uh, UI much easier to use, and, and I can give that to anyone uh, without understanding of just an internals, and he will know that okay, I need to put path here, command here, response will be here, and that's all. Uh, so, um, and this uh, this UI of sequence adapter will be uh, with him throughout all the test development because every uh, tool will be wrapped with this uh, with the sequence adapter and uh, the, the UI will be, the, this experience will be uh, unified, so to say. Uh, yeah, and driver sequences, so about how I use it. So usually I have some kind of uh, library, LabVIEW library, some kind of driver for the device. I build it as PPL and wrap it in sequence uh, sequence file. And then uh, you know I configure it to no model, use parameters, error, uh, stuff like this, and I automate it because I have this, uh, you know, this this uh, this way of working where I create those drivers and components, put it there, and I can automatically uh, create templates out of it. So let's have a look what I what I mean by that. Uh, let's have a look. At another example. Uh, I will read the comments later because I just uh, um, and the response later because I, I can't do, do things at, at, at the same time. Sorry for that. Uh, let's say uh, how uh, how we can deal with uh, with templates. So I have this uh, driver uh, sequence here. So this is just dummy sequence, but that would be the my API, so to say, right? So I have something there, and if I create a sequence, I use this tool, and I have now my templates here. I can actually drag and drop like that, and I have everything uh, here. What's more, I can uh, tweak parameters, so I can alter this path uh, programmatically. If I have some need for that, I can change this this value here. So in this uh, in this tool, I automatically assign this uh, this default flag. But if there is a need and uh, some kind of logic, we can we can use uh, we can change it. So we can assign some rules to to change this default value. Uh, so this is what I wanted to show you here. Uh, this is this. Uh, okay. In a moment. So yeah, this is about templates. Uh, so in summary, uh, I usually I, I use templates because they are faster, in my opinion. And um, you, all, almost always, uh, I use this uh, sequence adapter to give this unified experience for people to uh, uh, which build this uh, this uh, sequences. And I know that uh, step types are different; uh, they provide a different set of set of uh, just different uh, class, so to say. Different set of features are available there, uh, but uh, yeah, but um, I guess with with templates, it's uh, it's it's easier is easier easier just just easier. That's what I wanted to say. And uh, what's more, we can uh, easily automate uh, toolbox creation with uh, with this through CLI or with some kind of uh, tools menu like like I showed you. Uh, of course, everything depends on the use case, but uh, like I said, this is what I what I use. And quick drop now. Quick drop. So uh, this is how it looks uh, how it looks. This default test and quick drop. It provides you different features, but basically you can uh, get away. Uh, you can you know put your mouse to trash can and start using only um, keyboard. That's the that's the idea. In practice, it doesn't 
work really well yet. Uh, I mean, you still need to click something, but uh, we're getting somewhere, I would say. So uh, in here we can uh, put uh, uh, steps, callbacks, variables, we can create new sequences, we can enter templates as well with this syntax. With variables, we can put them into, into particular uh, subgroup, locals, parameter, and so on. Uh, steps also uh, indicates uh, adapter, so we can type sequence editor action or sequence editor pass fail test, and uh, this will also work. Uh, yeah, it was introduced recently, so 10 years between LabVIEW quick drop and, and test and quick drop. Uh, it's too much, in my opinion. And what's missing? From what I know, you cannot add uh, uh, sequences uh, of the current sequence file you have, which is sad. You don't have shortcuts uh, like, uh, I, for instance, uh, I don't know, f f like in, 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 in LabVIEW, we have those three letter shortcuts for, for items. So there's no such thing in here, which is a pity. And also adding those variables uh, that there should be that should be nice. Uh, well, I mean, it would be nice if we if we could if we could have a shortcut for uh, adding, let's say, num number parameter without uh, tabbing or clicking through items. Um, so let's say if there would be some kind of shortcut like p space number, and it will put new number in in parameters, something like that. So there's, I think that's uh, something that they could add uh, for those shortcuts. And what's uh, what's the most depressing for me was uh, that there, there 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 is no uh, there is no option to start your tools uh, from it like in like in Lovely Quick Drop. So that's why okay. So uh, yeah, this is a huge step forward I think for Testant uh, to add this Quick Drop, but we could expect much more from it, and not only from from Quick Drop, but uh this general concept of mouseless uh, navigation so as like i said before i think currently uh it doesn't work so you need to you need to uh it, it's not faster and that's the that defeats the purpose so so yeah and to uh work around this i i created this uh this custom test and Quick drop, which uh, you can use similarly to this built-in quick drop, but this one allows you to run uh, to run this uh, tools you have. Uh, so uh, let's, yeah, I was inspired by this uh, Darren Nuttinger, "Don't wait for Lab R&D, implement your own Lab features" presentation. So and now I par paraphrase it, don't wait for an IRND, implement your own features. And this uh, custom quick drop uh, is a good starting point for, for any of you which uh, dreams about some kind of custom um, a custom uh, tools for, uh, for test stand, which can be triggered with uh, some uh, keyboard shortcut. So uh, in, in short, how it works, uh, yeah, so, and I will show you that in a, in a, in a, in practice in a moment. So uh, in front end callback, I start VI. This VI in a polling loop checks application manager sequence files collection. Application managers ac access through engine uh, internal options. So this is uh, application manager for the sequence editor I, I have running. Uh, if new uh, sequence appear. Uh, in this list, I use uh, get sequence file view manager uh, using uh, the new sequence from the collection to get sequence view connection. And from this uh, from this connection, I take uh, view connection object. I don't know why, why it's not visible here. Anyway, then I use view connection object and register key down event for it. And when I realized that I can register events for sequence editor objects, I was really shocked. Uh, so, uh, so I use this uh, to monitor shift space uh, combination uh, when, when, when you have a focus on, on a sequence view. 
or a sequence list. I don't know why variables doesn't work. It's I need to debug it and triggers this display uh, tools dialog, which lists all the all the tools you have available using uh, context of uh, of the, the the active uh, sequence. So so you know that. Uh, tools use expression to um, set some features like name or enable hidden stuff like that. So we need to have context in which you evaluate it. So, so I, I use this uh, like that and run this tool. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, this is a summary, but maybe before that, I will actually show you this. Uh, uh, okay. So I started this uh, already. So by the way, it, Okay, let's let's have a look. So the logging is longer because it's uh, initiating everything uh, in the front end callback. But if I have it like here and I press shift shift space, I can uh, see let's say this one and I can start this tool like 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 that. Um, so once again, shift space and profile execution eight, no clicking. Yes, it's it's working like this. The problem with this is that first of all, you can see it's sequence is already in the running state because it's using uh, under the hood execution. So if I click X here, it will display this message that uh, you have uh, running execution. So to properly close it now, I first need to log out, and then I can I can uh, I can. Uh, I can close, so that's uh, that's a problem with this. So you know, this is uh, something fresh. I prepared all of that uh, just for this presentation. So I needed to put every everything together to have some proof of concept. So it is definitely. I, I'm sure it's a lot. There are a lot of bugs there, but uh, but you can play with it, and and uh, if you like it, play with it, and let me know if uh, there's something needs, that needs to be. Uh, fixed and yeah I think that's uh, more or less what I wanted to show you uh, I know that uh, I have like two minutes more so yeah, this is uh, this is uh, that was the last part of this presentation so if you like uh, uh, those tools you can check uh, this repository I copy paste it in in a uh, in a chat. So have a look uh, what's there. And uh, yeah, thank you. If you have any question, I can stay for a couple of minutes and try to answer it uh, via chat. And also that's the moment when I will start reading all the comments. Okay, so thank you. Okay, I don't know if uh, if you're still there, but for those who are still listening, I can show how I uh, work around this uh, this environment uh, startup in in practice on uh, using actual files. So here you can see I have multiple uh, uh, environments, and in here I have this start but which I mentioned right so uh, so here we here we have everything we need to start sequence editor using par particular environment we can use even more flags here to for instance start something like startup or setup uh, sequence if if it's needed so in one example I use this uh, setup uh, sequence to input uh, to create uh, templates for instance from my uh, drivers uh, sequences and here this is this is the shortcut for for this startup bot and uh, i just uh, you know created this uh, change the icon and it looks like simple application uh, start um, so that's uh, one workaround for for it and from the user perspective it it's nothing. I, I don't think it's uh, it's any problem to to start an application from the shortcut instead of uh, sequence uh, sec edit executable, which is still not. Uh, yeah, you can you can access it from from 
uh, and I launch her like this, right? So instead of running this one, you simply run this one. So, so I don't see it as a big problem. Uh, the whole thing can be automated. So you can automatically create this, this bot. Actually, this, this bot is always the same and you can automatically assign icon for it if you like. Okay, I really... So Cyril, uh, regarding linking environment with uh, workspace, I think that let me quickly check. You can also link it in your bot script. Um, Oh, no, we can. There is a workspace file. So you can actually specify work workspace file together with environment file and that uh, the component which will link uh, those two items will be your script file. And that's that's it. Okay. I don't know if Mathieu is still there, uh, but there was a question about Instrument Studio. Um, in general, I, I I try to avoid building uh, custom operator interfaces because I believe it's just uh, duplicating uh, code because I already have sequence editor which provides I like a full set of features I, I would expect. And then uh, building uh, some, some UI uh, which which provides exactly the same, it's just pointless. And if you want some kind of very specific uh, interaction, then you, like I mentioned in presentation, you should ask yourself, is it actually a good tool you use? But there is a use case for, uh, I recently realized that, that there is some kind of integration between sequence editor and instrument studio. And if you use a uh, 64-bit version of, of test stand, you can also have additional pane here with connections for Instrument Studio. And you can have like two application running side by side. And uh, there is a, a dynamic interaction between what you see in test stand and what you see on the graph, let's say, of simulated oscilloscope in Instrument Studio. So. Uh, so in the so that might be useful not for the production environment but more like R and D testing or something like this, where you would like to have more uh, insight uh, to what you see and then you you have like live indication of uh, of measurement on your simulated uh, device in Instrument Studio. Okay, if there's no more other question. Uh, I will close this, uh, this session and we can, uh, if you need something, you can reach me through LinkedIn. Uh, so yeah, uh, once again, this, oh, that's my name. You can search me on LinkedIn. If you have uh, something to discuss, uh, you can reach me there. Uh, have a look at this repository with this uh, with this presentation and the tools I I presented, and uh, I hope uh, I hope you like it. So thank you once again. Bye.